Okay, this video is um, practice with trig derivatives. And we've already done the odds, but I wanted to do some practice with the evens. And um, I'm gonna go through these in class, but for those of you that aren't in class, and you can go through this with us, and it's kind of a nice practice. And make sure you have your derivative card out with you. So the first one is y equals two cosecant x plus five cosine x. And this is on page 195, two through 12 even. So I'm gonna do the first derivative, and I see that's kind of set up all nice, so I'm gonna do y prime right off the bat here. I know the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotan x, so that's gonna to turn to a negative two cosecant x cotan x. And I know the derivative of cosine and negative sine is negative sine x, so it's gonna be negative five sine x. And then I look at it and say, is there anything else I can do to make that, um, in factored form, and no, so that's gonna be my answer. So that's an easy one. The second one is f of x equals radical x times sine x. So the first thing I want you to recognize is this is a product. So this is gonna be my f and my g's. So we're gonna use the product rule. So f is radical x, which is really x to the half. So I'm just gonna put it there so I can use that. f prime is going to be one half x to the negative one half. G is sine of x, G prime is going to be cosine of x. So we've got it all set up here to do the product rule. So I got F prime of x is going to be F prime G. So I'm gonna do one half x to the negative one half sine x plus F G prime and F, I'm gonna leave it as x to the half plus F G prime. And now I've got it in a form. So I have a term here. I'm using Christmas colors here. I have a term here and a term here. And I'm going to write this in factored form because you know that I want you to practice doing that. So if I look at this and do this in factored form, I see I can take out a half, which is kind of nice, and x to the negative half because that's my smallest of my two in my two terms. So if I take a half, x to the negative half, if I factor that out, what I have left in this first term is just a sine x. In my second term, if I have x to the half divided by x to the negative a half, that's x to the first power. And don't forget, there's a one here as well. One divided by a half is two. So this is going to end up being a two x cosine x. Okay, so let me do that again. There's really a one here. One divided by a half is two x to the half divided by x to the negative half is x to the first power, and then you have cosine x. You can rewrite this. Um, I When I got done, I'm like, this is good. But the text said, so I'm going to write it um, this way as the text had it. They had sine of x. Okay, they actually multiplied that through. So lots of times when you go to do this, I prefer it in the factored form, but they actually had it like this, um, sine of x plus 2x cosine of x. And then they had um, that one half there, so it's gonna be two radical x. So you could write it and split it up for both of them, or you can leave it like that. So that was kind of like what the text had. But I, I really don't mind it that way. All right, so let's look at number six. So here I have e to the theta times tan theta minus theta, and it's g of theta, so theta is my uh, variable. So let me extend this page a little bit. So I realize I've got a product rule again going on. So here's my F, here's my G. So F is going to be E to the theta, and we love that derivative because F prime is also E to the theta. G is going to be tan theta minus theta, and that's okay. G prime is going to be, so the derivative of tan is secant squared theta. And the derivative of theta is one. And I look at that and I'm like, wait a minute, secant squared theta minus one is a, a an identity. Because I do know that when I go to do the identities, you have to look for them and to see which one is what, that can I use it in that spot? And anytime I see something squared, I'm always looking at, okay, is there an identity that I can use? And I do know that this comes out to be secant squared theta is really, when I do the identity is tangent squared theta. 
All right. So you have to look at your identities and make sure that you know what's going on so that you can, because sometimes that makes life a lot easier. All right. So that's what I'm going to use. So now I'm going to do the derivative. I got g prime of theta is going to be f prime g. plus fg prime, and now I have tangent squared theta in there, but I can't factor the tangent the tangent out because even though this is a term, this is a term, it's um, not in both terms. Okay, so now I'm going to just factor the e to the theta out, so because this is a term here. And this is a term here. So right here is the key to the, all this, is recognizing this is an identity. So g prime of theta is going to be e to the theta. I'm going to factor it out. And then I'm going to write it in order. So it will be tangent squared theta would be first plus tan theta minus theta. So I just kind of put this in the front. But actually, I factored this out in this and just put them in order. So that's 6. 8. So here's 8. 8 I have as cotan of t over e to the t, and I see this is a quotient rule, so let's set up our f and g's. So f is the cotan of t, which is kind of weird to write it like that, but that's what they used was t's. And so then I know f prime is negative cos, oops, that looks weird, equals negative, negative, cosecant squared theta. Remember, all co-functions are negative. And then I've got g equals e to the t, g prime equals e to the t. So f prime of t, remember this is a quotient rule, so it's f prime g, so it's going to be negative. I'm going to stick the e to the t in the front, but minus f g prime, I put the e to the t in front, all over g squared. Now remember, that's really e to the 2t, but I do see I have a term here and a term here, and I'm going to factor out that e to the t. When I do, I have a negative cosecant squared t left, and then minus cotan squared of t all over e to the 2t, really. And then I say, oh, yay, those can cancel out. So this goes away, and this just goes back to e to the t. So that's nice. So then I have f prime of t is going to be negative cosecant squared t minus cotan squared t all over e to the t. So that's what it would be. You get, actually can factor out the negative as well, but that's good. All right, so here I have number 10. I have another quotient. So let's set up our f and g's. f equals 1 plus sine x. f prime is going to be um, cosine x. Sorry, I lost my place there. g is x plus cosine of x. g prime is going to be 1 minus sine x. Okay, so let's kind of get this up. This is a quotient rule. Ready? Y prime is F prime G, so I have cosine X, X plus cosine X, minus F G prime. And I just want you guys to see something. If I do F times G prime, that's 1 plus sine X times 1 minus sine X. That's really 1 minus sine squared X. Isn't that the, if you were to factor that, be the difference of two perfect squares? So I just kind of multiplied those together and did it like that to save me a little time. All over g squared, so I have x plus cosine of x squared. And the cool thing is I start looking, uh, I see sine squareds and cosine squareds and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm wondering if something's going to be happening here. So let's kind of keep going and see if something does happen. So I'm going to, I can't really factor anything out of this term. Say I always check this term and this term. I can't really factor anything out. So I'm actually going to just kind of do the distributive property. So I try. So I got x cosine of x plus cosine squared x minus 1 plus sine squared x. So I distributed that negative all over x plus cosine of x squared. 
And then I see, yay, sine squared, that's positive, plus cosine squared. Those two together make a one. Remember, my identity is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. That's the main one I'm always looking for. That's a one. So I'm kind of going in baby steps because I think you guys are going to see what's happening next. So I got x cosine x. I have plus one minus one. See how that happens? So because I add these two are one, there's a minus one. So those are going to go away. But I just wanted to show you that all over x plus cosine of x squared. So this whole thing comes out to be x cosine of x all over x plus cosine of x squared. That's my derivative. All right. And I have one more. So let's try 12. So I see it's the quotient rule, so I have my f and g's. So f is going to be 1 minus secant x, f prime, and the derivative of 1 is 0. And I know secant is secant of x tan x, but since there's a negative, there's going to be negative secant of x tan of x. g is tan of x. So g prime is going to be secant squared of x because that's a derivative of tan. And if anything, this should make you better with your derivatives. So I have y prime. This is the quotient rule. So it's going to be f prime g. So I have negative secant x. And this is cool to do this, tan squared of x. Because when I multiply these two, I can do it, write it as tan squared of x minus f g prime. And when I do that one, I can actually just, I'll just write it this way at first. So fg prime, I'm going to just put the secant squared in front. So it's fg prime 1 minus secant x. All over g squared, so it's going to be tan squared x. Okay. And I'm going to look at these and say, well, can I factor anything out? I always check because factoring out is so much easier. And I could factor out a, a secant x. So let's try that because it looks like I could take a secant x out of here and here. So I got y prime. If I take a secant out, I have secant of x. And then what's left in this first time term is minus tan squared x. And it's going to be minus secant of x times 1 minus secant of x. Okay. So I'm going to do a double parentheses here so you can see it takes baby steps here. Now, when I go to do that, I see that I can still do the distributive property, and I could probably do it all in one step, but I'm really careful because I don't want to make mistakes. So I love my Christmas colors. So I got secant of x here, then I got minus tangent squared x here. Then I'm going to do the distributive property, minus secant of x plus secant squared of x all over tan squared of x, okay? So I'm looking at this, looking at this, and looking at this, and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a um, an identity thing going on, I think. So I do know, ready, 1 plus tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x, right? So I actually, actually, actually could solve for secant squared, which is 1 plus tan squared. I can actually put this in this spot right here because that might help me um, simplify even more because I have a negative tan squared x. And everybody goes, well, how do you know to do that? Well, I always am looking to see if I can do that part right there. The other thing you could do is say secant squared x minus tan squared is 1. You could also do that as well. So let's try that one instead. So I'm going to do that instead. So if I do 1 equals secant squared x minus tan squared x, so that means this one right here and this one right here is going to together make a 1. Okay? All right, so now I have y prime is secant x times 1 minus secant x all over tan squared of x. And that is my derivative. So there's a quite a few ways you can do some of these, and the identities are what you have, with trig is what you have to look for. 
So that's it for this video so for, in, for more practice on your um, trig derivatives.